Well, hello. One question I've been asked many, many times is how to make soap out of lard. And that's what we're going to cover in today's video. Hello, I am Sarah James from Soap School. It's great to have you with me today. The beauty of making lard soap is you really don't need a lot of ingredients at all just three ingredients. We're going to be using water and our water amount is a little bit less than normal and that's because it does take a little bit longer to thicken the soap and get it to trace. Don't worry, the whole recipe is in the description for you so you can follow along. I'm using 130 grams of water and to that I'm going to add 67 grams of my sodium hydroxide, my lye. And it is important to make sure that your lye always goes into the water and not the other way around. Give it a good stir, make sure that everything is fully dissolved and then we can set that to one side to cool down. Now we're using lard. Lard is pig fat or in other words tallow and this is the classic way that soap has been made over a thousand years. It's the most classic, the most old-fashioned, traditional way. And I understand that many people may not want to use animal products in their soap, but there are also just as many people who really do like using all of the ingredients and being zero waste. And if you're a homesteader and you have your own pigs, if you're in a country where lard is readily available and affordable, this can be a really great option for you. So I don't like excluding anything if it's something that can be useful to people. And of course, we've got many, many other recipes for you to enjoy that are completely vegetable based and some that are even vegan. So there's something for everybody. The beauty of making lard soap is it really has got a lovely feel, very, very creamy feel to it and very, very moisturising. And it remains an incredibly popular soap. Now, although I've purchased ours, you could absolutely render down your own and then filter it before allowing it to cool down and then chopping it up. And of course, once it's turned into soap, it's going to last for many, many years. I'm going to melt this down until it's just about liquefied, maybe just a little bit before it completely liquefies, and then we'll start transforming it. So it's almost melted. There's just a little bit not melted at the bottom. We can actually stick blend it. But first, let's have a look at what the temperatures are. Oh, great. Oh, great. My thermometer is not working. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you know what? This is a perfect example. So this is an old fashioned soap. It's a traditional soap that has been made for over a thousand years. And I'm sure they didn't have a thermometer. So let's not worry about the fact that it's not working. And let's actually just celebrate soap making in its purest form. So I know that this must be pretty okay because the oils are almost completely melted. Let's just take it from there. I'm gonna finish them off by stick blending them a little bit before I add the lye in. Now that helps to break down any of the small pieces that are left. And that means that the heat that's already in our oils will melt the residual elements down a little bit faster. And look, already melted and done. So we're ready for moving on. Now the beauty of this soap is not just that it's lovely and creamy. It really does produce the most beautiful pure white bar. And it's really, really hard too. And a lot of people do like a lovely firm bar of soap. Now, although this is lovely and creamy and extremely moisturising, because of that beautiful oleic acid that's in there, we get the firmness, of course, from our palmitic and our stearic acids. But what we're missing is our bubbling ingredients. We don't really have anything that's going to give us lather and bubbles. But not all soaps have to have lather and bubbles. And we could have added coconut into this, but I wanted to keep this as a natural soap, just as it would have been in olden times. Let's take this to Trace. Now 
Now you're going to notice it takes a while to take this soap to trace and even though I've discounted the water a little bit it's still going to take a while and although we could do this in a much more authentic way and just use a hand whisk or just stir it for ages some of us do have a life so I am opting to use the stick blender just to take it that little bit faster but of course if you wanted that real authentic experience you could just stir it it really does take a lot longer than most of your standard soaps. So I've been stick blending now for about six minutes, I would say, and look how fluid this still is. So I think we could even take the water discount down further, but be prepared, and that's why I don't like doing hand stirring of this. It really does take quite a long time for this soap to actually start to thicken up. So if you go into this knowing that it's gonna take a while, you're not gonna panic and think to yourself, oh my goodness, I've done something wrong. You haven't done anything wrong at all. It's just gonna be slower. Let's pour this into our mold. I'm gonna pop this into a warm oven, I'm not adding any fragrance at all. I'm keeping it completely natural, just as it would have been. And then after 24 hours, we'll be cutting this into bars. And this is a soap that you don't wanna to leave too long. If you kind of left this in the mold for a week or so, and just forgot about it, it would be really, really difficult to cut this because it's such a hard bar. And it's done. Look, beautiful, hard white soap. That's absolutely glorious. Let's cut this into a few bars. I'm just gonna use a knife. And it really is hard. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. And lard soap always comes out with this gorgeous hard white bar. Doesn't have the big bubbles that most of your soaps do, but this is that traditional lye soap. You know, it really is a soap that has been around forever. I'm going to do a lather test and just show you what the lather is like for this style of soap. And there we go. Look how beautiful that is. Although it's still got some drying out to do, all of the pH changes will already have happened in this because I did put it into a warm oven to gel. So it's creamy, it's moisturising, but you can see it's a weak bubble. It's much more on that creamy side. It's got a lovely slip and you can feel it's gorgeous and moisturizing, but you're not gonna have those acres and acres of bubbles because we don't have any of our bubbling oils in this recipe. This is a traditional classic soap, a lye soap as it's often referred to. And there you go. So what do you think? Are you gonna have a try at making your own lard soap? Do let me know. Or maybe it's one that you already make. I've loved being with you today. It's always great being able to share some time with you. I can't wait to see you in another video really, really soon. Bye bye for now.